call on December 14th. And um, so these are the notes we had last time from the call or from our call, and we had a different things we were talking about. Um, there was a question from Eddie. Um, I think he's on the call today, but um, maybe we could talk or recap a little bit for Eddie from, uh, I believe, Alibaba. Maybe just um, a brief overview on how to consume the Dash APIs when we get there. He's newer to the group, so maybe we can give a small explanation um, once we get there. Was that your question, Eddie? So, so basically, like uh, this is come from the discussion. And uh, my the currently, like the we have like the net or low balancing. They are using the RT flows. So my understanding, the dash is, you know, basically were not uh, limited where to using those APIs. So pretty much like just uh, you can consider renaming or generalizing current RT flow those APIs. So I want to like uh, make. Uh, some discussion in the group to see that will that be the correct understanding basically once we get to the the api library we can using that uh, not in the sync d in the like i say from application directly to programming the flow for getting the the high cps those uh, approaches or we have to go through the sync d so that's something i want to discuss in the group Okay, and I have to admit, this isn't my specific specialty. Um, maybe someone with more um, sonic or software knowledge might be able to help out. Yeah, I think I can uh, uh, I can put some thoughts here. So we have the APIs defined through uh, GNMI, right? So um, so there is uh, also the the application DB schemas defined in the Sonic HLD. So so basically the expectation is the, the controller or the external controller can program using the GNMI to populate the application DB and it's not expected to, to directly go through SYNC D. I mean, if that helps answering. And we are also defining the Yang model. So, um, so they be, yeah. Yep. Yeah, prison. Yeah, that's for the more like say for the application to give you the policies. Like say, for example, for my net case, it give me the netting policies. My mm -hmm. question is like say for after the first packet handling, like um, because normally I will handling this within like either my infra or within my app. Basically, then after that I need to program in the flows. So I need some like this a quick and efficient way to handling it. So that's why I will come to see what. Because the moment I go into the the sync view, which means I need to go through the radius or the the these crabs, right? So or I can just using this API directly to from whatever I'm handling the first packet. So uh, after the first packet is being handled, it's uh, it's the connection tracking, right? I mean. That it's will more be... like I say, the, say for example, I need to offload my uh, flows. Then I need to program yes. it into the hardware. So can I just program it directly from where I make a decision? Because that probably I can get the most efficient way to put this into the, it's more like a, similar to what currently say, you use RT flow. Then you program into the hardware directly. You see what John, I mean? Eddie, Eddie, this is, this is John. Um, I, I, I think what you're describing is more like an OBS offload kind of model where, yes. where yes. you have like your own application, your own kind of policy decisions being made, and you're deciding on offloaded and which ones you don't want offloaded. I think what Dash is trying to do is it's trying to say that all of the known services for a hyperscale cloud provider like have been understood for a while that Dash can just directly implement those in the data plane without having to have this same kind of a, uh, let's just say OVS offload kind of model. And so, uh, you know, like the, the first packet of the flow is processed directly in the data plane and the connection, the flow entry and everything is just inserted directly in the data plane um, uh, without, you know, uh, um, uh, um, requiring, you know, going through like multiple layers of like APIs and, and uh, mm -hmm. 
So, so let me understand it. When you say the date plan, do you mean that this is, the, say, for example, in the, because normally like a data plan, say, for example, in the SOC or the ARM chip, right, or for the DPU? Right. Yeah, I so, mean, I think the data plane is like, you know, each supplier will have their own implementation of it. It might be a hardware pipeline. It might be, it might include, you know, okay. CPU cores. It could, it could be FPGAs. I mean, it could be anything, but like Dash is defining like what's being done in the data gotcha. plane. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So that means that, so that is still aligned with my thought. It's like I say, I don't necessarily go through the sync D, which is in the R. So for example, I could, because it really depends on like say, which hardware we, we are using, right? If I'm using like say, some guys which they have purely the P4 agent, so they, their software mostly in the SOC on the chip, or someone have more like the powerful, like a data plan, then I can upload, like you say, into the DPA, those kind of things, that's fine. But that's not part of the, the, the sync D or the Sonic approach. No, because like th there's like nothing in Dash that requires like on a per flow basis uh, to go up to, uh, you know, to, there's no like APIs like on a per flow mm -hmm. basis. Like the definition of the Dash data plan is that on a per flow basis, everything is mm -hmm. handled directly and it's only yeah. like like you know acls and routing and mm -hmm. statistics and stuff that you know have like apis that go through the psi uh, apis gotcha okay so then basically the agreement is like i say we don't limit uh, this api to be consumed uh, by the sync d only if somebody want to use it that way, it's okay. But since it's a library, it could be using or like anywhere. It could be in the SOC for the uh, the the DPU, or could be even the DPA, which is a kind of like a RISC five or any accelerator, right? So it's a, it's really up to the the customer consumer the choice. Can, is that a correct understanding? I, I mean, I think it's up to the supplier and the consumer. Like if the supplier gotcha. wants to supply it, you know, at that level, then they can. If they want to supply it like within the full context of Sonic and all of the containers and everything else, then they could supply it that way. But I think like this, this project has really been about like, what's the definition of that? get multiple suppliers to mm -hmm. all provide an implementation of it. Okay, that's Dash good. Dash is only defining the packet transformations needed and defining the APIs for those packet transformation and what we need to program in the hardware, no matter uh, how it is implemented in the backend. Yes, thanks. that's a good clarification because yeah. I mm -hmm. just want to make sure we are not limited. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, and one of the things we discuss. Hi, one of the things we discuss in this group is, is test cases, and we'll be getting into some pull requests shortly about that. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to create a really full set of test cases that run at the API level without an off sitting on top, and that will sub sort of substantiate your approach. Mm -hmm. And we'll have test cases. Hopefully, it say, yeah, this works at the Psi layer um, and then and the network interface layer. Put whatever you want on top of it. Normally sonic, but possibly more than that or other than that. Yeah. The reason I want to ask this one because we probably will move ahead before, the, like I say, this is all the dash into upstreaming to I think I see the upstreaming will be in the, the 2023-05, that's a dash infra. So I assume that will be coming there. So that's, so that's why I would say our side, we probably will be continue there but once the api is ready we'll convert into the, the dash api but right now we are continuing on our rt flow apis Thanks, so Eddie. i assume that um, basically Eddie's, the moment Eddie's, the IP uh, comes, yeah the dash apis are already upstream to sci and uh, you know implementations of course is uh, up to the vendors but you know uh, the implementations could be uh, present at any time because the Sci APIs are now available in the same hey, for Eddie, Dash. Hey Eddie, I'd, I'd like to just clarify one thing. Like RTE flow APIs are at the flow level. 
yes. Dash APIs are at like the policy level. Um, there's like a there's a there's a difference. Like I don't see how like if you have an application today that's using RTE Flow APIs, that like you'll just be able to replace you know, uh, an RTE flow data plane with a dash data plane uh, because mm -hmm. there's not like per flow kind of APIs in dash. Like the, the definition of dash is to push all of the per flow kind of processing directly underneath, uh, you know, the side la layer and not expose it, uh, 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 you know, in that way. Okay, I see. I, I think I make a confusing there. I thought like a dash is a flow APIs because no. what, so we're talking about the all these like the the we need to be near all the load balancing thing. So if this is only the policy, then that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because I this will put it in the side level, right? So I didn't aware like it's a, hey, this is on the, the policy level. Right, right. It's just, it's just, you know, the the Psi APIs like expose, you know, like routing, ACLs, policy, you know, policy kinds of things. Not per there's there are no, I, I should say not no per flow APIs. Like there may be some per flow APIs as a way of being able to like monitor like which flows are in the are in the data plane, but there's nothing that uh, a that you know has to perform at a per flow level above the psi layer. Then, because I also get confused because, if, for example, in the HA discussion, we are talking about the flow level sync. If yeah. Dash doesn't even aware of the flow, then this won't really up to the vendor, right? Right. There's been a lot of discussion about that, um, but so like really, I agree with what you just said. Like HA could be up to the vendor. I think that there was and maybe still is like there some um, goals to try to make interoperability between uh, uh, suppliers, or even if there's not interoperability, to at least expose like what's the contents of what's being synced between you know Dash instances uh and so i think that's why you know there's a lot of discussion about the details of what's in in the ha <clears throat> messages it's around interoperability and and visibility but like what you said is correct i mean like um it's you know it's like those details are not visible to the psi api layer okay <clears throat> so thanks everyone for the explanation and conversation. I'm wondering maybe if we can move on to PRs or, or something like that. If, are we closed out, Eddie? Good yeah, there? That's good. Okay, so I would awesome. just treat the dash as a policy level. So yeah, then we yeah. yeah. And and thanks everyone for helping to go through a thorough explanation. Um did did anyone have PRs or something they'd like to cover today? I saw a few coming through. Yes, yeah. so um, with Sci Challenger getting accepted um, mm -hmm. last week, we have PRs now for test plans and test cases that we are holding off. So we just made a bunch of them at once. Mm -hmm. And we could go through them. Uh, if you want, we can start Do with 297 you... first. Okay, 297. Got it. So this is, uh, if we look at the files change, this is a test plan with a few test cases in it. And also it takes the template for test plans and test cases from Sonic management. And we uh, put it in here as well. So the test plan template, um, just to make it easier when we're gonna merge back into Sonic, yeah, and do the transition to follow the same template format and everything. So, this is this one. And um, we, is there something specific I should be presenting or do you guys want to present? No, there is nothing specific. It's just <laughs> okay. a template. It's a direct copy paste from Sonic. Plus okay. uh, we took it and modified it and we added a few test cases in a test plan for VNet to VNet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, oh, so it, it's, go, it's pretty mm -hmm. small. It's a test plan and then it's... Uh, the test plan okay. template from Sony. And we saw the we saw the comments and everything. 
yeah, we, we're gonna address those before it's being accepted. So now it's awesome. just so everybody's aware, and when we come back from uh, holidays, awesome. uh, wonderful, we will go through acceptance. Great. Okay. And then we have three o two. Um, three o two. You said. Yes. Okay. And. Uh, so 302, it's nothing but the test cases. So there are a few cases for, I believe, five of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Functional, uh, inbound, outbound, and bidirectional. What they add on top comparing with the cases that were existing before is the fact that once the flow is established, it sends the response back uh, just to make sure the response back is being accepted as well. Mm -hmm. um, and these are the test cases uh, mentioned in the test plan that we just contributed. So these are functional. They have in line the site config and everything. And it's, uh, yeah, just inbound, awesome. outbound, one IP, uh, basic functionality. Yeah. Then we have 301. Now, did this one, do you need reviewers or anything, or what's the next action on this, uh, we'll, just we'll, out of we'll curiosity? All, yeah, we'll be good on all of this if people can provide feedback, like I said, so we can address it and uh, okay. merge them in after the holidays. So Okay, all right. And then you said 301? Uh, yes, 301. 301. So 301 uh, adds quite a number of test cases. There are about, uh, I would say, 10 files or so with test cases. Each has multiple in them, and it's a SI operation. This does not require any traffic generator. It's just make sure the SI calls have been implemented. And we're going to add um, as part of our learning process. So basically, you know, while we are learning to use the SI, we created these cases to make sure the SI calls are working. Mm -hmm. um, and this should be already integrated. If not, I'm going to do it the, into the CICD pipeline. Now, okay. what we have here currently, it's get, um, create and delete operations. We have added also set and get and modifying of the attributes with the different values. Uh, unfortunately, BMV2 at this moment does not support set and get. So we yeah. mark them as skip. Um, okay. We may qualify them on hardware that supports those calls, uh, but for community purposes, our skip at this moment till BMV2 catches up and adds set and get support. Okay. Once that happens, we'll just remove the tags and they will also be picked up to be run in CICD pipeline. Okay. I mean, for, for this kind of things, uh, can you mention the PR description? Uh, you know, this uh, yes. being speak, uh, I don't see those being described in the PR. Yeah, I'll add, I'll add more comments. Yeah, this is. Where do you need um, that done, Gohan? Just for me to learn, is it more than just the title? No, 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 it's a description. Whatever I said now to be actually mm -hmm. the description of the PR so people okay. can get the details, even if okay. they're not in this meeting and, you know, come later or oh, okay. review that other time. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll do that too. Okay. Um, awesome. Then we have, um, I would say, 303. Oh, baby hero test. Okay. Yeah, so this is using the um, hero test kind of topology diagram and so on, but only with 48,000 uh, IPs. So only mm -hmm. one uh, IP per ACL, but mm -hmm. all the other scales number in. Um, mm -hmm. And at SI level, it's configuring everything via SI using the config generator. And on top of this, we start adding verification. So these are like data plan system test cases. So it's mm -hmm. like, what is the latency? What will be the packets per second? And of course, you know, BMV2 is going to report 100 packets per second, whatever uh, hardware will report, you know, millions. Mm -hmm. So um, these are system test cases at was at scale doing verifications, a uh, bunch of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this awesome. is this one. This is cool. Okay. Yeah, I, I split it in very small PRs. You know, there are many, yeah. but small just to make it easier to provide feedback yeah. and, you know, accept awesome. one, decline the other, and so on. 
And uh, last one, this is a controversial one. I heard that a three or four. Okay. So um, there is a spec for uh, underlay BGP with up to a thousand routes and then two thousand routes uh, when you do HA failover and so on. Uh, we added a test case for underlay BGP. Mm -hmm. We are actually able to run it on hardware mm -hmm. um, that supports it. But yeah, BMV2, I have not heard any plans of supporting BGP and uh, oh, yeah. probably we'll add a marker on it to be like mm, hardware or something like this, not BMV2. So people know that this will not mm -hmm. work on BMV2 and it will work on hardware. Okay. But this will be... And we'll keep enhancing this. It, this will be underlay BGP cases in here. Okay. Cool. Uh, does anyone know if there are any plans for BGP ever to be in DMV2? Let me see if anyone from AMD is on the, or, or uh, NVIDIA is on the call. Sorry. So I don't see. Uh, you know, before we even go into. Um, BMB2, are yeah. there even the SI APIs there that we have integrated to be, you know, call even the underlay and how we're going to call this thing? Because so far, all the overlay SI APIs are essentially making those, you know, P4RT calls, right? So what's what's the interface here for those calls? So for underlay, we are using a classic Sonic. So this case is in theory could run very well on a Sonic switch. My understanding is that all underlay portion for Dash, it is served by classic Sonic in a way. There is no change there. So in theory, you could take these cases and run them on a switch. And if it's desired, I, I can actually make a demo like that, where I can run this, um, let's say, on a hardware platform that supports this on a Dash a DPU, as well as run it on a Sonic switch. And it should work. Okay, but, but your assumption here is that uh, your assumption here is that you, you're going to be configuring all these underlay on a DPU um, because you when you basically said BMV2, I assume that you are talking about just one physical device present in an appliance use case, for example, where there is no switch, and but you do need to configure some underlay. Isn't that going to be, you know, going to work or no? I think, I think probably, I think probably they need to have a, uh, you know, test the description, right? So I, I don't know, like, uh, I look at the briefly look at PI, I don't know, like, what, what test they actually run. It's unclear to me. Okay, I, I, I love the description. I mean, the feedback is noted from previous mm -hmm. PR. Uh, I'll detail all this in the description of the PR. Hmm. But specifically to, all the underlay cases. Uh, my understanding, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is that all the underlay it's inherited from <laughs> classic Sony. Yeah, I think that that's right. I I, I have an action item also to update the underlay section for the Sonic HLD, which I'm working on. So I'll add uh, um, those I attributes that we are going to use for um, underlay routing. Like in it, it is uh, um, the correct understanding that we are going to use the regular. Uh, classic Sonic underlay APIs, yeah. So in in that case, you know. Um, I mean, I for, mean, I think that... I I think you know basically if I understand correctly, you know this underlay routing, it's uh, already covered by the standard Sonic test. Yes, at functional level, so all the cases from Sonic will apply here since it's the same thing. But uh, Dash has certain like scale requirements, like for example, a thousand BGP routes, which a Sonic device may have higher requirements. And when you have HA and one failover, it needs to be able to load out up to 2000 routes. I believe that it's in the spec. So things that are Dash specific in terms of number scale, th those are, we can add in here and that I think they have value. Yeah, BGP functionality is the fact that it sends the packets and the communicate and no, the I, I think the, I think the you know the the Sonic test bed already have those uh, you know BGP set up all these things right so we should reuse it here I mean it seems like this one is another BGP setup that which is not reusing what we have in the Sonic. Is it at scale, Gohan? Is it it's fast? No, I think the Sonic. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is certain HA 
part that the the sonic uh, test didn't cover, right? So, but the, I think the in terms of skill, the sonic can you know um, the test can change the skill. We mean currently we test more routes than what the currently you know one k routes, right? So therefore you know we can dance. Uh, downside that uh, that test. I mean, they, but the infrastructure is there, right? So what I'm saying is that if we want to add some BGP test, we should go to the Sonic management to add those tests, leverage the existing infrastructure there, and uh, modify and uh, then add some more, um, you know, feature there, right? So instead of creating a new test infrastructure to test just under the BGP for Sonic. It's a whole lot of work, right? So. Yeah, I mean, with this, I totally agree. Anyway, I believe the intent is that in a few months or how long it will take, all this will be migrated under Sonic. And in no, 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 but no, no. I mean, migrate is one thing, right? So, but the other thing is that, uh, you know, this one start a new test infrastructure on BGP, right? Which, which is already there in the Sonic management. I mean, if you, if you, I think, you know, that that's a, that's a, you know, your new setup, all these things, right? So why not leverage what we already have in Sonic and, uh, you know, uh, doing those tests? There's a like here, plenty here of, a, yeah, yeah. We have the BGP test. If you go to the test, test, so I think there's okay. a, yeah, BGP test. And, yeah. and we are in fact running this test, right? Yeah. So it's huh? uh, no, we are in fact running these tests, so it is possible that we can use these tests for uh, uh, for all the underlay test cases. Uh, yeah. the, I mean, yeah, some are already covered, but I mean, they, they mentioned HA, you know, some scenarios, I don't think the Sonic current covered, right? So, but we have the yeah. infrastructure. I mean, you should use a, reuse the infrastructure. I mean, this one seems like setting up a new infrastructure, just test mm -hmm. the BGP. Hmm. No, I, I agree with you, and I think this is a good idea. I'll uh, take it down probably from here, and I'll actually make it in Sonic management. I, I think you are right for the underlay portion with Sonic management to have them there. So I'll make a PR in Sonic management for it. Okay. 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 Great. Now, I guys, I think uh, I, time, I have a guys. quick question. Okay. Um, I, have a, I have a quick question on this particular topic, right? I mean, we, we're talking about Sonic part and so forth, right? It's good, um, but if you if we believe that even in 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 just in the dash uh, part itself, where you have just a single DPU appliance, there is no switch ASIC, and then you you do need to program certain underlay uh, functionality, right? And you want to test it end to end. Um, what's your suggestion? Do you want to bring in all the existing test cases from? The sonic management and then you know really try it out in the dash um instead of you know redefining those things i i i see this thing that we are we are punting it into the sonic side of the things but we do need to do sometimes you know this end-to-end -end testing for that what's your suggestion here right mm, so i think there's a a cup of things right so what why is the you know for this one, for this specific one, this is uh, uh, with uh, uh, control plans involved, right? So not just uh, uh, you know purely the data plan testing. This is more about the the, the, the BGP, the control plan testing, right? So you need to have uh, you know BGP stacks running on Sonic. You, you need to have all this Sonic integration in order to 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 finish the test. It's not like okay because the previous uh, you know the um, is hero test or whatever the test we have discussed in the dash mm -hmm. is purely about calling the Psi uh, Swift API or you know um, this, uh, um, this, is a, this is a challenger layer, right? So that, wow. and then you know and sending the packet to verify the data plan, right? So I think that one we can continue to do it, right? So you know, even adding some, uh, you know, uh, underlay layer API call and uh, verify those things. I mean, the, I think we discuss all those things, right? So, but this one is, uh, it's different. This one is, uh, you know, um, um, e e e the control plan involved. Therefore, at least I, I don't think we have, uh, um, you know, 
have have the, have covered this case. Say, okay, the, this case also covered the uh, you know here. My suggestion is that uh, you know since this is uh, more like uh, control plan related, you know you already have a uh, an underlay related. So we already have the sonic management infrastructure to cover those. So why not? Uh, okay. You know. Okay. Yeah. No. No. I now I understand uh, your rationale. No, well, thank you. I think that that explains it. So now, in other words, for anything that we we require any underlay functionality testing, we are essentially doing through some you know static routes and so forth, uh, which we carried out anyways right now uh, on the dash side, and that will continue to suffice for as far as you know all the other testing is concerned. But we yeah, just yeah, go yeah. ahead and do the yeah. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know in terms of uh, the Sci API, those data plan functionalities. I think the you know the Swift, the Challenger, the framework is support not just the calling the uh, overlay, but also calling the underlay, right? So therefore, you know, you can continue to have those things. Uh, you know, data plan testings there. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Now, guys, I do need to shift gears and hand over to Prince, if that's okay. I had one more PR. Yes, I am. Oh, you Thanks do. For... Oh, sorry. What? Um. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you want to do one more, Chris? If that's okay. Yeah. And then that should leave plenty of time for uh, Prince. Yeah, I'll try to make it brief. I mean. Okay. Uh, Which one is it? Uh, three hundred magic number three hundred. Okie dokie. Okay. So um, I can actually um, share my screen. Okay. So that's okay. Make it easy on me. Okay. Yeah, it's no fun. In uh, well, which page to click on? So, hi everyone. This one, um, I wanted to start creating some tutorial content for using Sci Challenger because um, even our own experience, you know, there's an onboarding, um, you know, curve to ascend, and we're we're putting lots of test cases out, and so I wanted to start working on like educational content and and some uh, tutorial examples that build a bit of knowledge base. And it's this is my start at it. It's not thorough or complete. And what but what I'm doing is focusing on tests which show you how to configure um, device um, devices using config files and config scheme, et cetera. And I'll get to traffic testing at another time. And we already have test cases that are running, but I want to do is start backfilling with a knowledge base on how they work. And so um, I also wanted to document the side challenger test bed for Dash. Mm -hmm. So I started with that, just explaining the framework. And this this is basically now committed a readme file. Mm -hmm. And you can see this content looks familiar from some of the slide decks over the last few months. So I just committed that to a readme. Okay, so mm -hmm. just discussing everything. That, that's the main, that's one of the main contents I wanted to share. And the other is this tutorial file. Mm -hmm. So the, the tutorial readme. And it goes through a bunch of little test cases that I wrote just to explain things and it walks mm -hmm. you through progressively how to write, how to configure the device and using the side challenger format. And um, so you have to look at this kind of as a step by step set of lessons. Yeah. There's all these different ones showing different techniques. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, don't want to try to go through it all here, but I think people find it interesting. Yeah. And, um, this is actually the PR where you'll see all the files that are changed. And it looks like a lot, but a lot of it's just test cases. These are little test cases, JSON files and Python files. That's the main content. And then the README I just showed you is that tutorial README. And a couple little tweaks here and there to some existing files just to sort of make everything consistent. So um, hopefully people can take a look at that. And these all these test cases right now, they're already being run in the ICD pipeline. The PR will run them so that they're not just standalone lessons that get stale over time. They're being run by the CICD with every push, with every run. So they're going to be kept fresh. I don't, I don't like stale content building up. So that's the PR. Hopefully people can take Thank a look you. at my time. Yeah. Maybe I can make a stretch goal for Yusuf to do like a little video of one of a run through of one of the test cases and we can attach it or post it. Sure. If, like a two um, to three minute video. Yeah, if he wants to pull down, clone the repo and and mm -hmm. run and go through, I'd be happy mm -hmm. to work with him, you know, offline. Yeah. Okay. Um, that would be fun. Awesome. 
That would be a good, yeah. Good to have. Some people good. are visual learners and some people are, you know, auditory learners or reading learners. So that's awesome, Chris. Thank you. I've already got, I've already got fans. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. You. That's a great job actually, Chris. Yeah. Oh. I very like such kind of uh, documents because it's really helpful for starters, especially. Yeah. yeah. And Andre, you know, you can take any of this stuff and put it into the side challenge repo and adapt it if you like, you know, and I'd be happy to see if there's anything useful here that can give wider usage. That's great. Um, thank, you awesome. I, thank you for that. Yeah. OK. And, and now I'm going to hand off to Prince. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Christina. So uh, there's the PR 296 submitted by Vijay for the metering proposal. So I'll let uh, Vijay speak about the, the PR. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. So yeah. Uh, can I just share my screen? Please do. Yeah. Unless you want me to do it. Uh, yeah. No, I think it's easy. 296, yeah. OK. Are you guys able to see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this uh, PR, we're basically in discussion with Prince and Microsoft uh, uh, folks. We just uh, uh, are adding the dash uh, uh, metering uh, feature to the dash. Uh, so I'll just go at the changes. These are basically the changes in the Sonic HLD and also introduces a bunch of uh, uh, new schema objects in that DB. Uh, so I'll just first look at uh, cover all the uh, schema changes in that DB that we are introducing for the metering feature. Uh, and just open it this way. Yeah. Yeah. So first thing is that uh, we're introducing a new meter policy and uh, meter rule objects <clears throat> along with the dash uh, meter object. So the policy is basically uh, allows uh, uh, allows you to configure IP prefix, uh, which is a priority based uh, match rules. And from there you will be able to derive a bucket ID. And uh, along with that, there is also uh, something called as the dash meter. So this object is basically given a bucket ID, you're associating it with an ENI. And you can also give like an optional uh, metadata string that the orchestrator can uh, use to pass in some context about the, uh, what the bucket ID means. And uh, this is basically uh, used to account for the traffic uh, on a uh, on that bucket on that particular ENI, and there are TX and RX counters, which are uh, number of transmitted bytes and received bytes. So these are read-only attributes. Uh, so you would be able to fetch the uh, the uh, statistics on, on that bucket using this dash meter object. So apart from that, we are also uh, introducing attachment points for. Uh, these uh, buckets in the mapping table. I think these uh, some of these were present already. Uh, so this whatever bucket is uh, getting created here can get attached to uh, multiple points. One is in the mapping table, and then there is the uh, route table. And uh, it also can get attached to the uh, policy rule. So along with that, the route also has a uh, Boolean which will allow the policy to be enabled or not. So basically, uh, uh, when if there is a route hit, uh, then the route itself can give a bucket or it can uh, enable the policy lookup, which will then uh, the packet will go ahead, do a policy lookup and pick up the bucket ID from the metering policy. Okay. So this is just, uh, I just wanted to go over the schema first. Uh, you can just look at the description that we have added for the feature. So uh, yeah, just uh, kind of uh, this is a description of what exactly uh, how we have described earlier in the uh, schema. So there are route table entries, mapping entries, and meter policy rules. They are configured with the global meter bucket values. The bucket values are uh, globally unique across all vnets uh, in a given region. So. Uh, so these uh, meter buckets are mapped to per ENI uh, specific metering buckets. So uh, the global metering bucket is associated with each ENI by doing the dash meter ENI create, which is basically ENI comma meter bucket ID. That's the entry that you create, which will associate a particular uh, bucket ID with that particular ENI and the accounting gets started whenever you pick up this bucket ID in the pipeline. So, and if, uh, 
if there is a if there is a routable entry or a, a mapping policy rule which is hit and you pick up a meter bucket id in the pipeline and that uh, particular uh, bucket id is not provisioned then that uh, doesn't get uh, meter uh, so uh, when uh, the ENI, the per eni bucket id also needs to be uh, deprovisioned or deleted when traffic no longer needs to be metered for this combination uh, and then the uh, of course the whole idea of doing all this is to do a get on the per eni comma bucket id or eni comma start to fetch all the meter tx and rx statistics so the way uh, uh, this statistics is used in azure is for uh, billing on a per eni basis uh, each metering bucket currently accounts for number of bytes number of uh, packets is uh, optional uh, coming to the meter policy, it consists of a bunch of metering rules. It's similar uh, uh, semantic, like uh, somewhat like ACL. So, but, uh, sorry, I mean, I, I, I can I ask some questions? So what is this global meter uh, bucket? I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand. The, so meter is just some kind of counters, right? So what is this uh, global meter bucket? Per, what per, does it mean? Is it per ENI or global or per, you know? Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So the uh, the metering buckets itself is considered as a global resource, but since we need to account for the uh, the accounting happens at a per ENI level, we need to associate that uh, bucket ID with the particular ENI. Uh, so that is where there is the um, there's a separate create that needs to be done on a uh, on the dash meter ENI comma meter bucket ID. But the way we are uh, looking at it is that uh, uh, bucket IDs are like a global resource, like because the bucket IDs itself can be like a 32 bit value. And this 32 bit value can be associated with whichever uh, against whichever ENI where it needs to be accounted. So, for example, Gohan, there could be a bucket ID which relates to, a, let's say, a private link. Uh, uh, that private link, the, uh, the same bucket ID. Uh, associated to the private link, but on different ENIs, uh, the counts are different. So the same bucket ID is associated to ENI uh, one, and the same bucket ID is assigned, I mean, assigned to ENI two. The two counts will be different depending on where who originated the traffic. If that makes sense. So, so is is this meter uh, represent a single uh, counter, or it represent a set of counters that uh, uh, you know could be um, mapping to different UI. I mean, I, uh, I yeah, each bucket ID yeah, itself I'm, is a single counter. So uh, basically there's a TX and a RX counter associated with a single bucket. So in terms of just the hardware resource, the way uh, you can think of it is the hardware itself has like a bunch of uh, buckets, say 16K, 32K, 64K and so on. Now you kind of uh, take these buckets and you're associating it uh, to a particular ENI where the accounting needs to be done. I saw and, it's uh, associating you know, with a particular rule, right? So what do you mean by associating the, with a particular ENI? So on a ENI, there are uh, some set of uh, prefixes. Or I think let if I can uh, rephrase that to go on. So this bucket ID is like a class, right? It's a class ID. It's like a class. Now, for, for this class of traffic, each ENI has its own, this thing on how much it, uh, let's say, how much traffic it sent to that particular class, right? So the global bucket ID that Vijay is referring to is that class ID, is that identification for the class. And there is a perspective from each ENI on how much traffic was sent for each of these classes. And on that ENI comma bucket ID, there is one set of counters, TX and RX counters. Right, but the class itself uh, can have different. Uh, each ENI can have a different counter. I mean, different values for that class because it's ENI comma bucket. <clears throat> right, yeah, and so the I class definition way. itself happens. Yeah, where the class is derived is either from the mapping entry, or from the route entry, or from this uh, uh, more. Uh, uh, flexible uh, metering policy, which gives a prefix versus a class. Right. Did you say earlier these were read only values? The counters yeah. themselves, so yes. The counter themselves are read only because uh, the 
in the pipeline whenever we uh, this particular any packet hits this particular bucket then it gets accounted against this bucket okay. and then the so, idea is to read it back so there's no way doing to a to get through is there any way to clear it do 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 you have some specific examples uh, on that uh, you know this uh, yeah. meter class and uh, um, yeah, and this mapping rules, uh, I'm, I'm maybe, uh, I, yeah. I don't know if it's, so, I'm the only one that is to, to, to not quite understand the, the um, you know, the, the. Yeah, so we have added a few examples uh, below. So before uh, going to that, I just wanted to just uh, finish oh, covering okay. this one. Sure. Yeah. So I think, yeah, this is basically uh, just describing the meter policy, the fact that it contains a bunch of rules and uh, <laughs> each rule consists of an IP prefix map to a global meter bucket ID. Um, so the policy itself is the attachment point for the meter policy is applied at an ENI. And of course it can be shared across ENIs. Uh, so there is one uh, uh, fact here is that uh, metering behavior, uh, uh, it, it's possible that in the pipeline, um, the packet can get hit in the route or mapping table or metering policy, because all of these uh, tables in the pipeline are deriving the bucket ID. Uh, so we kind of need a way to um, uh, kind of tiebreaker or to choose if multiple tables in the pipeline uh, derive the bucket ID. Uh, so these are based on the uh, requirements uh, that uh, one thing is that when the route table entry has a policy lookup enabled, and if the policy is a hit, then the policy uh, meter bucket is picked over the route table entry meter bucket. So this typically, um, sh uh, if uh, it should not happen because like if there's a policy, if the route itself has the control to enable the meter policy lookup. So now if uh, route ha uh, is for whatever reason, if route itself is giving a meter bucket ID and it is also enabling the policy lookup and it happens that the policy lookup is a hit, then you get two bucket IDs in the pipeline. You just need a way to pick one. So here basically what we're saying is that the policy um, bucket is uh, uh, winning. So uh, and going forward in the pipeline, there can be a subsequent mapping lookup, which can also give a global metering bucket. And uh, here the mapping bucket ID is overriding uh, previous uh, previously derived bucket ID only if it is a private endpoint. So if it's a private link mapping, then uh, it is uh, overriding it. Again, all this is based on what the Azure requirements and uh, uh, you've just made these uh, uh, rules. Right. So where are the Azure the, requirements? I mean, sorry. Uh, uh, I have never seen any Azure requirements from metering, at least not in any of these community talks, right? Are there any uh, requirements that were presented before? Um, so I think discussion, discussion with Prince, yeah, probably. Add more I context. put in the chat window just what I had derived from prior conversations, and um, there's a link there. It's much more generic than what you have written. No, I, I find this one honestly very complicated. I don't know why does it have to be this complicated. There are so many things basically that are thrown in here. Policy, class, bucket ID, ENI. I mean, all of those things, you know, if I, I mean, if we have a first a definition of this one and then we can say that how they are related between I each other. I think we can uh, we can add a section for uh, yeah. for all the requirements part, yeah. And and then then I can actually understand the flow because so far it is, you know, I, I it's, I'm having a very hard. I don't know about others, but I'm having a hard time really. Yeah, 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 no, 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 Hanif, I think you are not alone. I mean, I I I I I think I also have a hard time to understand the, uh, yeah, this, this seems uh, it seems very complicated. I mean, I, I'm not saying that uh, you know, it, 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 you know. It, it should be. I mean, I, I'm just saying that. Uh, I, yeah, I think because I, I I don't understand how how this works, and even for this some basic concept like global metering bucket ID, the class ID, I, I don't think I understand that. So it means. I, I mean, them. at at the, at the pipeline level, right? So what what the, what is actually uh, there? So I I don't I don't understand the behavior model here. Yeah, so perhaps we can add one uh, 
like a pipeline diagram with the behavioral model just showing how it's derived at various uh, points in the pipeline that's not something we have right now uh, it's more like described in text so uh, Probably, yeah that yeah. is something we can it's add it. yeah also Vijay, maybe your examples might uh, yeah. clarify yeah. a bit i'm hoping yeah 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 sure, Let, sure. Uh, yeah let's go through the examples so. Okay, so I think this is basically whatever is the VNet to VNet case where we uh, we have just uh, added all the uh, meter policy uh, metering stuff into the existing example. Uh, so here, uh, like for this particular ENI, uh, there you can define a meter policy ID, and the meter policy itself uh, is defined. Uh, here, so basically this meter policy is saying that, uh, hey, this is a IPv4 meter policy and the rules, uh, there is uh, one single rule in this example, which says that match on this prefix and pick up the metering bucket 20,000. And uh, uh, you can have multiple rules here, uh, all uh, inside the same policy, with uh, which can all derive different metering buckets. And um, it's the, a uh, there are- Priority. It's a pr with priority to just add it's like a acl with priorities and there are rules in it. right so the as far as the metering bucket itself uh, there are like four buckets in this example 1000 1001 1000 2 and 20000 uh, and all these are associated with this particular eni which is defined here uh, now we can go and see how these uh, each of the metering bu buckets themselves are attached right so here we have uh, the metering bucket thousand is attached to the uh, this particular route, which is matching uh, which is matching on thirty dot zero slash sixteen, and the uh, metering bucket thousand is also associated with the forty dot zero slash sixteen, and then we have uh, this mapping entry which is uh, deriving the metering bucket one thousand two. And we have the metering bucket 1001, which is uh, attached to this mapping entry, right? So now let us go through the case, uh, like here. Right? No, so sir, sir, is... before, sir, before we go to the case, I mean, I, I think there are two things, right? So one is that, uh, um, you know, this uh, uh, dash site abstraction, right? What kind of, uh, you know, data plans are metering object we're providing to the uh, at the at this uh, dash side layer and otherwise the specific azure case how do we config how do we leverage the uh, you know that that the uh, apis to to satisfy the azure requirement i think these are the two separate things right so um i think maybe um you know i, I get what trying to but maybe we're trying to combine these two and uh, then I think uh, you know. I'm sure you know Azure use case is very is complicated. So you know, then it's a little maybe a little bit harder for the people to understand. Uh, you know, um, what what is the Azure use case, right? So, but maybe one one thing is that what is a, you know, the 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 data plan, the side APIs that we're going to provide. What is the model there? And uh, yeah. yeah, so. I, yeah. I know that you know the, these two things are uh, you know obviously connected, right? So you, you have this requirement, you derive these APIs, right? But it's still separate, right? So you know maybe yeah. people you know like Hanif, maybe sure. you know, they're, they're, they're interested in understand. Okay, what is the side APIs? What is the model that I need to support in terms of uh, you know creating those meterings? And then later, yeah. you know. Uh, at least he can understand that he can understand. Okay, what is the Azure requirement, right? So they, they, um, then be able to figure out. Okay, why we have this API design, right? So, um, th that I think so is that, that yeah. Yeah, so I think the P for so the SI APIs itself is uh, like generated from the uh, well uh, from the P four dash P four uh, tables, right? So I think once we have the once we bring this in into the dash P four uh, BMV two then mm -hmm. I guess the SI APIs also will be clear. But I guess what we are just presenting here is uh, uh, just the app DB and the uh, schema and the how uh, it will be programmed and pushed down. I think the dash P4 changes is, uh, has to come separately. Mm -hmm. No, I, I get that. I get yeah. yeah, I think this is, I mean, 
one of the things that essentially perhaps myself and and Gohan are asking is it, it's still it's still in terms of really the relationship right i mean of course we we have we see that okay you know there is a data model here that you're trying to present but even at the top level even before we go into this thing so some of the new concepts that you brought in like either classes or bucket id or even some policy id and all of those things how are they related and how are they shared between certain other things that we are used to like eni and vnet right because some of the things that you i i'm i'm trying to grasp some relationship here right and if it's mm -hmm. it's easily captured somewhere in the document then it will help me really go through the flow right so once i understand yeah, the relationship I think that would be great yeah i think we should uh, uh yeah go ahead yeah, I think we can add one section like uh, uh, Prince there also said, right? Just to briefly this thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think um, here. If we can pick this, we have two minutes left. I'm wondering if we should pick this up in the next um, dash call when we pick it back up, you guys, or do you want to keep going today? Um, I don't know who has 10 o'clocks or not. So, Christina, if I might, I can. I just want to finish the example. Please do. So yeah. I okay. Think, uh, like, I think that for a uh, uh, few folks, if they go through this example, it yeah. actually talks about how the packet flow okay, is great. and what gets picked up, right? So. Oh, uh, okay. Great. Yeah. So, uh, just quickly, like, I think for this example configuration, these are. Uh, so, let's take a uh, packet. If you take a packet which is destined to ten one one one, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, here we have the LPM lookup, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, which hits this slash sixteen entry. And uh, here the action is uh, uh, map routing and mapping. it goes to the mapping table, which hits the 10.111. And uh, here, because the meter bucket is associated with uh, uh, 1001 and it hits the mapping, uh, 1001 is associated with the mapping entry 10.111, then mm -hmm. we'll pick up this uh, metering bucket and it's used for accounting the traffic. So, and uh, this meter bucket is associated with this ENI. So whatever traffic uh, hits this mapping entry is accounted against this ENI's uh, meter bucket. Yeah. So, so the idea is you would be able to query on this ENI uh, comma 1001, which says, hey, uh, give me how many bytes uh, uh, went to this mapping entry uh, 10111 on this ENI. Mm -hmm. And it will be able to tell that, hey, you uh, transmitted some X number of bytes. Hence, you will be billed at this particular uh, rate or whatever. Right? Maybe this so, part is something I don't understand. Because a, a particular route, we hit a route, it already, uh, you know, classified to a particular ENI, right? So then... But Gohan, it's not, the, the mapping table is not, right? The yeah. mapping table is not. Yeah. Uh, mapping table is not associated uh, to any ENI. Oh, the mapping mm -hmm. table is not. So this meter is associated with the mapping table, not the route. Yeah. So it's yeah yeah. It's also it can be associated with the mapping route or policy. There are three points where it can be associated. So I think these are the different cases where. Oh, when uh, we say the mapping be... table, it's a C to P a mapping table, which is not associated with a particular ENI. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that helps. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, the next case is also uh, similar where it hits a routing entry and uh, again it hits a mapping table, which is the meeting bucket 1002. It's uh, picked up uh, because it's hitting the mapping entry. Uh, so, uh, in the other case where it's direct routing, there's a metering bucket only associated with the route. So, obviously, it comes with the uh, the metering bucket 1000, which is associated with 30.0 slash 16, is picked up. Um, and uh, here, hey, so, this is so, so, so let me let me let me ask for this route, right? So because the route has associated ENI there, then uh -huh. what does it mean that the meter also have have associated ENI here? So this part, uh, you know, um, because you know. Mapping table, I understand that, right? So there's no associated ENI. Um, but for the route, it already have a ENI, right? So then what if the meter is not configured to enable that bucket ID on the ENI, but the route say, okay, pointing to this meter. Is that is that yeah. a valid case or? 
Yeah, that would be considered an invent. So that's what we have pointed out earlier, right? So I think it's okay. mentioned also about that if uh, it happens to hit a uh, metering bucket in the pipeline where uh, it's not actually associated with an ENI, then it won't be getting metered against the ENI. Oh, so why okay. does it matter? Why does it matter? Because, you know, a mapping table associated with VNet, right? And in if as long as you basically said that if the bucket is associated with a VNet, why does it matter for the ENI, right? Why do you have to really associate the bucket ID with the ENI? Yeah, so I think... Uh, the, so uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I think, okay, or I can, I can just quickly say since we're running out of time too. So roughly about this thing, the main issue is uh, for implementing this in hardware, right? I think we can't, uh, because the this thing gets replicated for every, each of these classes gets replicated for every ENI. So we can't all put all the, uh, all the buckets in all the ENIs, right? It's a hardware resource issue. So there is a finite set of resources that uh, any implementation would have in the hardware. For each, you know, that is replicated per ENI. So, a finite set of buckets where you can count against, right? Uh, uh, because of that, there is, uh, you know, uh, not all the buckets in the system are associated to every ENI. There is a subset of it which is valid for each ENI, and that is where the association comes. Can buckets be shared across the ENI? Uh, shared across the bucket. ID can be shared, but the bucket itself is per ENI. It's a bucket, comma, ENI. Because it it matters for billing to say that for this ENI, I sent it to a class, right? I sent it to a private link. But from which ENI did I send that, right? So that accounting happens per ENI. But the bucket type, the class ID itself can be common. There can be a class ID 2000 for a Cosmos or some other uh, pri private link, right? And that 2000 is the, on ENI 1, there, is, uh, there was traffic sent to 2001, that class so many bytes and so many, whatever the TX and RX, so many bytes. From ENI2 to the same class, there is a different uh, uh, yeah. count of packets that were sent, right? It's built separately, built differently. How do, how do, how will people use classes? I mean, where does it map to? So, so this uh, is uh, for billing, right? The controller says yeah. uh, for uh, this Cosmos, whatever, let's say some private link going for some service, the bucket ID is 3000. And then uh, the billing uh, infra picks up this 3000 from ENI1 and ENI2, I guess. But I think uh, the this more authoritative prints can explain how the. Uh, the, so, uh, the yeah, I mean, in other the words, one way to think. Is. Right. So, one way to think about it is the bucket ID, the semantics of what this bucket ID uh, accounts for is already uh, uh, associated and. Uh, uh, attached to by the controller. So the controller notes the fact that, hey, this bucket ID 50,000 represents uh, private link traffic, which is attached to associated with this mapping entry, and it needs to be accounted against this ENI. So I am really enjoying this conversation, but I'm also five minutes late to a different call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can, well, we can, can come back to this. Uh... I think uh, in so. A, in a separate meeting, but uh, by the time we will have more clarity on the requirements yeah. and what the expectations are. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. this so, is so, awesome. So, so, okay. How, are we having a meeting next week or is it canceled? Um, I was I'm I was gonna um cancel the next two Gohan because it's the holidays. Do you want me to hold one? <clears throat> if you want me to hold one, I'll do it. But I'm thinking most people might be out. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, 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 Prince. You guys, do you do 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 you think you will cover this next week, or we'll, we'll find another time? Um, uh, I think next week would be a little. little uh, yeah, All right. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, we will pick this back up, and if I can just show you one thing, VJ. Mm-hmm. You know, I wrote this a long time ago um, about the counters and, um, you know, what I understood about the counters and how they're assigned, what, you know, the rules, the mapping, blah, blah. Um, if you can look at this and, and align this with what you have, um, I put I put it, I'll, I'll email it to you, the link, but I also put it in the chat window. But um, if you could, if we could sure. work together on it. Yeah, okay, great. 
Sure, yeah, I think we land uh, probably on another kind of a picture. Which and you can reuse any of this. Out, yeah. You can reuse any of this that you want because I gleaned this from a lot of meetings that we've had. So. Cool. Okay. All right. So thank you everyone for coming. I'm going to stop the recording. And. Um...